So what we need to do is talk about something called delta E. We have to talk about uh, a metric for defining color difference. Um, we're going to use this for the rest of the presentation, so I want to make sure those of you who may be new to delta E are familiar with this concept. And there are several formulas for specifying delta E, which can complicate things. We're going to use delta E2000, which is a... I would say a better formula for looking at very small differences in color differences. A delta E of one or less is invisible to the human observer. So what we're basically talking about is looking at the values of two solid pixels and coming up with a metric that says how different are they in terms of their visibility to the human observer. So if you have two color patches and they have a delta E of one or less, we can't perceive the differences. They look identical. And when you start getting into values of less than one delta E, it's insignificant and not really uh, worth talking about. The larger the delta E value, the bigger the visual difference. So here's sort of an example using a, a really great piece of software called Babel Color, CTNA. And what I've done is I've inserted on the left uh, lab values and on the right a different set of lab values and this software then calculates what is the delta E difference. And hopefully over the internet, you can kind of visually see what a delta E of 5.66 looks like. It's pretty subtle. And on the right side of the image, what Babel Color does really nicely is it shows you visually the differences in a 5.66 delta E, these two blues, using different surrounds. So it's blue against blue, blue against black, blue against gray, there's some text. And so, Hopefully you can visually see what a delta E of 5.66 looks like. It's pretty small. But again, if I were to use a delta E of 1, they would look absolutely identical to you. So th this is where we need to move forward when we talk about both accuracy and difference of color of solid patches, which is what we're going to do to evaluate whether or not this statement about smaller working spaces and larger working spaces is true. Accuracy. You hear people talk about accuracy a lot. Most of the time, they really don't know what they're talking about, so let's go there for a second. In order to evaluate accuracy, you need something called a reference or a color aim. Uh, what you're seeing here on screen is a Macbeth color checker that is in lab color space, and each one of the 24 patches of the Macbeth was created synthetically in Photoshop. In other words, just by copying and pasting the lab values as defined by originally Gray Tag Macbeth and now x -Rite, what the Macbeth should be in LAB. So lab tells us what a color should look like. So this is our reference. Uh, this is our color aim. So if you look at, for example, patch number one, um, we get a value of, in Photoshop, we'll use Photoshop for the time being, a lab star value of 29, 19, minus 54. And if you look at a capture of a Macbeth that from a raw processor and then brought into uh, Photoshop and we look at the lab values, the value is 35, 15, minus 55. And we can calculate what that delta E difference is. And as you can see here on screen, the difference is 5.66. We actually saw that in the previous slide. So if you want to talk about accuracy, you need to have a reference. You need to have what are the colors we're supposed to have, what are the colors that we did get? And then we use delta E to tell us what the differences are. And you can come to a conclusion whether or not this is an actual accurate capture or it's inaccurate. Basically, the conventional wisdom over the years has been that if you have a delta E of six or less, you've got a pretty good color match. It's, it's acceptable. Uh, but your mileage may vary. Notice, for example, when we look at these lab values, that the big difference is L star, the first value. Um, its reference should be an L star of 29, and the actual capture has an L star of 35. So that's the biggest difference really between these values um, that you see on screen. And, and the patch on the left looks a little darker than the patch on the right. But the bottom line here is if you want to talk about accuracy, you have to have a reference, you have to have known values that you want, you have to have some sort of measured value of what you get, and then you have to get a delta E value of these two solids, and that tells you how far apart they are visually, how accurate they are. If people don't give you a delta E metric when, when asked, when talking about accuracy, 
uh, they don't know what they're talking about. They're basically making stuff up. Uh, if they tell you, oh, well, the delta E difference is 3 or the delta E difference is 7, that at least gives you an idea of how they differ, and that uh, gives you some sort of a, a, an idea of how accurate or inaccurate a particular color match is. And we're only talking about two solid colors. So the accuracy myth, I want to go over this. The proponents are telling us that we need to use the smallest working space, and then they discuss accuracy, but I don't think they understand the term and they can't prove their point. Again, for accuracy, you need to have a reference and you need to have something to compare it to, the actual image data that you're trying to compare to the reference. And then you can say, using a report like we just saw, how different are they? So in the example of the dog on white, there's no reference. Um, so we're not talking about accuracy here. We're talking about difference. And so what we're trying to discuss is the fact that if you take this image from RAW and encode it into sRGB, which is what we're told we should be doing, or we take the image and encode it into ProPhoto RGB, which we're told we shouldn't, there's no difference. I mean, the differences numerically are insignificant and tiny. And we'll talk about those differences towards the end. But um, this has nothing to do with accuracy. So if you hear people talk about accuracy, the hair on your neck should go up, and you need to ask them, give me a delta E value or an average delta E. How many samples are you talking about? What is the average delta E? What's the max delta E? If they can't give you an answer to that question, then you probably want to ignore them because they really don't know what they're talking about. 